So hi, welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing a teardown of the G303 wireless shroud edition version here showing you exactly how it's built, what switches it's got in it, scroll wheel, battery size, how to take it apart if you need to, everything you need to know if you want to tweak this 303 or just interested in seeing how it's built. Now if you're not familiar with this channel I'll give you the data and statistics to give you the edge of your rival gamers. We do things like latency tests, glide tests, four saturation tests and give you that upper edge on your rivals. So if you don't want to miss any of this, hit the like and subscribe button to make sure you're the first ones to see it. Now this was done on live stream on my Twitch, Bearded Bob. I do them live and then I come back here and edit them for YouTube. So if you want to be the first people to see that, also go and follow me on Twitch. Now this comes in at 74 grams on the scale, which is good. 75 grams Logitech say on the box. So now I see it's under a gram. I'm using the lighter fluid method and a splunger here to take these skates off. This will still damage them, especially the Logitech ones. I've done a video on this and showing you different methods, but still expect to damage these and replace and that would be my recommendation. I'll put links to my tools and also my shop in the description if you need to buy any of this stuff as well. So now I see the coming at 08 millimeters thickness, pretty standard for Logitech. No rounded edges. I've done a full initial thoughts on this as well. I'll put a link to the description for the G303 if you're interested to see what my thoughts were on this mouse. Rear one comes in pretty much the same, weighs a little bit more. Both come off fairly easy, there's four screw points. You can see here in the base, so you have to take the feet off. Then I go to remove the circular sensor one and I split it, which is one of the problems with Logitech, trying to take them off, even I still break them. So that skate's now wrecked. Still the same thickness. Now I'll take the label off. So we can take every piece, weigh every single little bit of it. So you can work out for weight reduction, which we've got a video coming very soon as well on that, which I also did on stream. There's also a screw in front of the USB-C, so it makes five screws in total, or that one's accessible without taking the feet off. The screws they're using here are the same ones they've used in all their Logitech, so the G Pro Wireless, Superlight, 305, 903, 703, 403, all the same type of screws, you've seen these before. We've also got this USB magnetic tray at the back. You can see me trying to open it up here, taking out the front screw on the USB port, then trying to open it further, trying to so split it into two. I find that I need to take out the rear USB tray. This is magnetic, and what you need to do also is push down in the middle of the tray. There's like a little clip. Once you push that down, you can then release it with a little bit more force, which is the magnet at the back that you have to release, and it'll tug out. It will make a little bit of a click noise, but eventually it will come out. You can see the magnet at the back here. This tray weighs two grams if you want to take it out. Do a bit of a weight reduction yourself, but you can have a hole in the back of the uh, mouse. If you want to see this video in normal time, I'll put a link to the full stream where you can see it and I can skip through it as and when you like. You'll see multiple different pieces of me talking to people as well as showing you other tricks. Now again, two more screws underneath that tray. This has got a total, I think we've counted of 35 screws, which actually is quite low for Logitech. Most of it's 59 or 49 in the 502. And the G Pro's got around 39. I use this little splunger to push down the side of the top of the shelf and the sides in it splits the little clips. Be careful though this transparent plastic is brittle. Be very very careful. There's also two cables that you'll see under here, one for the battery and one for the PCB connection. So don't just rip the top straight off because you will damage the cables here. These are bespoke ribbon cables. The battery you could replace but the ribbon cable you cannot. So do not damage the ribbon cable. I'd take the ribbon cable out first because that'll be the one that you can't replace and also the most delicate. It's activated by a little flat bit lift up, that grey piece you can just lift up. You can get your fingers in there, it's a little bit tight. See me here trying the battery first, but I changed my mind. Then I go back to the PCB. These little grey bits can ping off and you can put them back, but they are delicate, so just be careful. Once that one comes out, you can now see a hole down the PCB and just gently pull on the power connector. If you pull too hard, you can rip that port straight off the PCB, so just be careful. And this is what they look like in two pieces. You can see Logitech's using more ribbon cables in some, instead of something like on the 305 where they use cables physically soldered. So on the PCB, we can see three screws on the PCB that don't need to come off. You can also see the screws holding the side transparent pieces on. So there's two at the rear transparent ones and then there's one also at the front under the PCB that you have to take out to be able to access it. Standard screws, these ones with a slightly bigger head but a shorter thread. Again, generally used in the button 
holding for Logitech Max. I'm using a PH0550 screwdriver here to remove these, put your standard Phillips tiny one. Once out, this is the size of the PCB. It's quite small. I'll measure it up in a sec to give you an idea if I want to put anything else. You can see it's got an optical encoder. Bit annoying, it's off the 402. It looks very similar to the 402, not exactly the ideal encoder, in my opinion. Bit of a cheap encoder here from Logitech. Also means you can't swap it easily for something else. Pretty standard PCB. Good to see using a thin PCB here at 0.9mm. Take out the front screws for these sides, and then they just lift off. And you see a pretty basic base, comes in at 6 grams, nice and light. Standard power button that you see in all Logitechs. Some of the transparent sides you've seen. You also then see a 500 milliamp battery, which is huge. And how the sides look on this inner skeleton. Very standard Logitech configuration here. They always have an inner skeleton. But this one tends to be a bit more like the MPO1 with the switches on the mains, which I'll show you in a sec. You can see here it's using the micro on switches, commonly found in all Logitech mice. I'd recommend changing these out, but that's your choice. I'll also give my full thoughts on this mouse. I'll link to the description on that when I was tearing it down and playing around with it if you're interested. Side buttons are similar, the only difference here is the actuation piece or plunger sits lower down the switch. That tends to cause a little bit more flex at the top of the button, a little bit of a quicker click at the base. Not bad, slightly different here, normally it's right at the top, so Logitech tweaking it a little bit. We've also got here is a light sensor for the profile it took me a while to work out what that is that's the tunnel that passes the light all the way to the front of the mouse i thought it was something to do originally with the encoder we've got the screw that holds the magnet for the rear usb tray now what's interesting about this is is it looks like when we wait in a second it's going to be three grams but it's not that's because of the magnetic force so it's around a gram now getting this battery out is a pain it's really well stuck in it also flexes a little bit so be very careful one of the main problems I found was it's actually taped to one of the ribbon cables for the front switches. So I have to be very careful here when taking out the left side one here you can see, or the right button one, but on the left of this video. You can see it's catching, so I'm just being careful here that I don't damage it and rip it out the ports because it's connected at the top, rear and at the front switch. So what I do is I take it off the rear here first, just to give me a little bit of extra slack. A little bit awkward um, at the moment. Easier to do once it's taken apart because we can take the top shell off, but for now I just have to do it this way. And then I just hold it down and pull it. We're using three double-sided tape on the battery. You can see here it's stuck to it, so. Not the best design from Logitech here. They could have put that better under the tray or something like that, so you don't rip it out when you're trying to do the battery. You can see the other one has actually not come off, but still makes it a little bit awkward. Once you get the battery out, it's a maximum 4.2 volt charge, 3.7 volt battery, 500 milliamp for the capacity. This thing is a monster. Now we're trying to work out how we take the rear panel off. A little bit more stickiness on the ribbon cable, but you can see there's a screw underneath this ribbon cable. There's two there. These two are holding on the top shell now. Then I'm trying to release the other ribbon cable for the other switch just so that I don't damage things. These are going to be spoke cables, you won't be able to replace them. A little bit of wobbling around the top shell comes off now, and that releases the button screws for us. You can see here where those screws came through the top. So this is what the rear panel looks like. We'll do a bit of a weight reduction on that later on in another video I'm going to release. So we're getting out to 55 grams. Comes in at 6 grams. I'm just testing the encoder. Listen to this encoder from a MPO1, how loud it is. This one's had some weight reduction on it, but the encoder itself is still stock and it is crazy loud. Now listen to the G303, again, pretty loud. It could have made it a bit quieter, but for me it's too loud. I mean, the MPO1's just ridiculous. Using the old ribbon technique here for the side buttons that they used on the original G Pro and on the 703 and 403. Would have been nice for them to use the later technique they're using in the Superlight, but they're not. 
for me again using a bit of older technology here in this 303 they could have revamped this a little bit just testing the wobble on the left and right mains and he's actually pretty good it seems pretty sturdy there's a little bit of flex but nothing like on a super light good to see logitech here made the, the button a little bit wider you'll see where it screws and that stops that little bit of movement they've tweaked their design a little bit what they have for this mouse two screws holding in the main buttons pretty standard If you just need a little bit of pressure under the button itself and it'll just ping off you can use your nail or you can use a sponger here i'll put a link to these in my shop if you're interested in buying some you can already see a omron switch here we know what it's going to be it's going to be the 20 million i'll show you the modern number in a bit it's a shame they didn't use a different switch but the one i modded on stream i put ttc gold in it i also changed the size for chaos as well Anything that looks different, like I say, that part I'm looking at now feels a little bit thicker, like a longer across the button, like it's nearly across the whole lot. Other than that, it's a pretty standard button. Left side is identical, just opposite way around. The DPI configuration here is similar to the 703, where you take the screws out and then it pulls off from the front. I've seen this before from Logitech. You can now see the DPI button is a micro Omron. Cover here is pretty much similar to anything else. DPI button, yeah, pretty standard, nothing special here. Total of around three grams together. Use the T-bar configuration for the PCB connection. It is different, that's unique to the G303. Using the smaller screw here, we see in some of the switches. From Logitech, again, standard screws. And then there's little clips that hold in the side PCB for the side buttons, again, pretty normal. A little bit of a lift out and it'll ping off no problem. Like I say, probably slightly older technology here, slightly thicker PCB than we've seen in some of the later Logitechs, the Superlight being the one particular here. Would have been nice to see them change this out, although the side buttons here, because on the thicker PCB, will be easier to change if you want to swap them out. We have a close look at this skeleton inside. You can see the scroll wheel again looking exactly like a 403, including with the metal T bar. Switch comes out like an MBO1. Has a little clip at the front. You can see now it's using the, definitely using the 20 million on ROMs here. We've seen in all the Logitech mice, no difference here. It's also got a little lift up PCB holder, be careful of breaking these. Look at all the screws we're using, so many, so, so many. Built well, but like a tank as all the rest of the Logitech mice are, can't fault them for that. They definitely could save some money on uh, their mouse configuration, I would say, building it. So underneath the scroll wheel, you've got a little spring as well, and this little clip you have to pull out, make sure you don't lose that. You will never find another one again. Well, unless you get a 402. This is why it feels so aggressive, this scroll wheel. And this is because it uses a metal bar to control the notches that dig into the side of it. Not my favorite way to uh, do scroll, to be fair. It was a little bit too mechanical. Spring you'll never find if you lose it. Do not lose this spring. Now you can make it an infinity scroll or near enough it doesn't scroll as much as you expect not at the G502, but you can make it scroll now and now it has no notches and you could do that if you wanted as a mod. I get the scroll wheel out can be a real pain in the aim on these. Very difficult. I use this splunder again to try and prize it apart this mechanism. I probably wouldn't take the scroll wheel out unless you really want to. Nothing special here, the rubber's glued on it. Standard scroll wheel we've seen on the 402. I mean a cheap scroll wheel in a $130 mouse, a little bit of a shame. It's more like a Frankenstein 303, this one. It's got bits from all the other mice that Logitech do. There's nothing unique here for the 303 apart from the shape. This is what the skeleton looks like. You can see the springs on the button locations. This allows the button to ping back up a little bit quicker. For me, I'm not sure I've noticed it, but because the switch itself will push it back up. But that's what Logitech have done to try and give it a bit of better button actuation. And then this is what it looks like all laid out. All the bits, again, quite a complicated mouse. 
probably a four or five complication five being the hardest one being the easiest so if you want to take this apart you're going to need some skill or it's going to take you quite a while to take it apart and that's it if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe we'll get out my weight reduction video for it very shortly check out my thoughts on the 303 put a link in the description i'll give you what i initially think before i've even used it just on my thoughts and how it felt and stuff like that so i'll catch you in the next video see you soon Bye bye